for the record, my football career, I was the practice kicker. So, so let's, let's not get carried away here with my football prowess. Excuse me for one sec. Are you guys enjoying the hockey playoffs? Yeah. Yeah. Predictions against Nashville? You lose. Whoa! Whoa! Sweep? Yeah. Sweep? Any, any sweeps? Show of hands? No? Okay. How about the Leafs tonight? Anybody want to send some love? My, I'm a Leaf fan. There we go. There's my favorite. Um, <clears throat> well, guys, thank you for having me. I was here last year. I'm, on, I'm actually literally on a uh, tour of North America. I live in Miami, or my primary home is in Miami. I worked all last week in Los Angeles, and then I had a meeting on Monday in Vancouver, and then I stopped by uh, last Monday. I was there for a few days, <clears throat> and then found my way here and on my way back to uh, Miami uh, later this week. But, and <clears throat> before we get into probably what's the more enjoyable thing, which is the film stuff, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the soft skills of business. <clears throat> and the reason it's important is we all need to work. We all need to make money. Even And again, the, you guys are young and you're you know, working your hourly wages and whatnot. But I, most of you have aspirations and goals to be up here, whether it's a CEO or whatever it is, whatever the, the, the desire is, you want to get from here hourly to here. And you actually have to go through, unfortunately, the world is tough, and you have to go through each step. As you get a little farther into your career, you might jump a step. But sadly, you got to go from, what's minimum wage here in Canada? 11? Okay, well, you, you're, you're, you're starting at 11, and you obviously want to get to 50s and 100s, multiples of 100 uh, per hour. <clears throat> the thing that I would say, if all, if all I say to all of you right now and walk out the door, the best thing I can say to you is do more than you're paid for. And if you think about those words, and those aren't my words, those because I'm on camera, so I have to give copyright. Steve Harvey, the comedian and talk show host, I heard him say that a few years ago, and I found those words profound, and profound for so many reasons. It sounds trite to just go, oh, get, work, do more than you're paid for. But if you actually unpack that, that sentence, or that, that phrase, what it means is you're, you're conscientious, you're, you're actually thinking about the job it is at hand. And one of my biggest complaints, so I'll step into film producer role for a moment. One of my biggest complaints is seeing somebody standing around when there's so many things to be done. And you hear the word, oh, he's a lazy worker. It's not about laziness with the hammer and the, the shovel. and It's about intellectual lazy, or laziness. In other words, stated otherwise, it's thoughtfulness, it's thinking, it's anticipating. So what I would say is the most important things that as you young people, and again, I'll bring it back to, just allow me to use McDonald's, because or what's a pizza, or Junior's Burgers is a Winnipeg chain, or Gondola Pizza, by the way, which is delicious and just dreadful all at the same time. <laughs> um, <clears throat> When you're working there, there's, you hate your job, because it's a job. It's not your passion, it's not your desire. Um, but what happens is, is those above you, and I'm jumping around a little bit here, but what happens is, is when you start showing a level of conscientiousness to, and your employer sees this, and they see that you are actually doing more than you're paid for, what happens is this. You start getting all these kind of ancillary benefits. One is you get the good shifts because you're reliable. The other thing is, is as you've been there a while, when you do ask for time off because you've given, you will get with time. Um, so these are nice things that come from that. So do more than you're paid for. If all you get out of me all day is that, then that is a great uh, it's a great thing to take into your career, even as a CEO of a company. Sorry if I'm hitting that. 
Uh, even as a CEO of a company, I still have a board of directors that I report to. And that board is voted in and out by shareholders. And shareholders typically have wives <laughs> or husbands who keep them accountable. So <clears throat> I have to do more than I'm paid for. I can't just mail, I can't just achieve, if achievement is here, I can't just barely reach it or reach it. That's, that's, that's a recipe for a short-term career. The other thing I'll say is being on time. And you guys have heard this since you were little and being on time, be on time, be on time, be on time. Why? Why should I be on time? The key to being on time or the purpose for being on time, A, it shows you actually care. Well, first of all, a company is a system. It has to keep moving along. It's got its shifts. It's got its needs. Whether you like those or not, they need to run this system. So being on time is kind of a, we want to keep the system flowing. I'm a big believer in don't be on time, be early. And the reason that I like to be early, even today, I could have waltzed in here two minutes beforehand and come up here, I've spoken at universities all over the United States, I've spoken at film festivals in different countries, this, you know, but I came early because I wanted to see you guys. I wanted to get a sense for the room. I wanted to get a sense for all of you. I wanted to try your coffee, which was great, by the way. <clears throat> but so let me bring this back to McDonald's or Gondola Pizza or the auto shop or the, the wherever it is you're working or the retail. When you get there early, and I'm not saying get there an hour early, but you get there 15, 20 minutes early, you're not running in and jacking off and f all frenetic and you know, sweating. Sarah, can I help you? Can I take your order as I'm dripping sweat? You're, you're calm. You've been there a while. You get to size up what's going on. The other thing that happens is when you get there early, you build a relationship with your boss. And that's, and again, back to what I said earlier, your boss, and by the way, there's a million bad bosses in the world. So I'll just, I'll, I'll dispel that myth. Okay, there's tons of bad bosses. It's one of the great failings of North American business. That's a, another lecture. But um, when you get there early, you, A, you're calm, you get a chance to actually acclimatize to the environment. You get to see what's going on. Okay, if you work in a restaurant or you work in an industry where there's, you're providing things to people and there's potentially a problem, you may be able to help be a solution to that problem even before you've, you've um, hit the floor. Um, but more importantly and equally as important is that person that you report to they're going to see that. And they're going to see, again, they're going to, they're going to see intent. So there's a word I like, deliberate and intentional. I, this year, I've really employed those in my life. My texting is way down. I'm not telling you guys. I'm not going to give you the social media and old guy you know, texting. But being deliberate in my communications, being intentional in my communications means if I can't get something resolved in one, two, three texts. Okay, I, I, I literally have run out of patience with this and, and deal with it. But, so back to being on time, or being, okay, so being on time is the base. That's the, that's the, that's the award for just showing up, like good for you. But you're never gonna get ahead, you're never gonna learn, and you're never gonna grow if all you do is just aspire to be the baseline or the, the, the median. Um, so anyway, I don't want to beat that, that to death. Um, I can't tell you enough how, how much you will enjoy your work when you start actually getting there 15, 20 minutes, half hour early. The relationship and interaction with your colleagues, managers, even employees, the, 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 the intangible currency that you're going to pocket with the people above you and 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 for you guys because a lot of you this is a trade school where you're actually already you're very fortunate is, you're fortunate in that you already have a good idea I want to be a chef I want to be a computer whatever Frank does 
<laughs> I trying to figure that out. <laughs> Whether, you know, broadcasting. So you already at this young age, you actually have. So um, so don't just take this for, you know, when I use the McDonald's. And guys, forgive me, I should have applied this really into these trades that you have. Because you're going to intern. You guys are going to intern. You're going to intern at, at, at television networks and newspapers. You're, gonna, you're going to intern at, um, uh, at auto repair and at, at, at different computer places and, and culinary schools. Sorry, it's my weakness. Uh, but my point is, is think about this in the concept of an environment where you're not getting paid as an intern and you're there a half hour early and you're, and you're, and you're, and you have intent and you're deliberate and you ask the right questions and you get, and you become, all of a sudden you're not, people think interns, oh, it's free labor. No, interns are a pain in the rear end. Because you got to teach, you got to show them, and a lot of them come late. And by the way, they don't last with me. They literally last a half a day with me, and then I have somebody remove them because I, I don't have time for that. And I'm not a bad guy. I'm not a mean guy. Because the intern, the my best intern of all time, was he he knew more. Like he just anticipated everything I needed. He was on top of it. He was early. You know what he did? He made my life easy. And that's, again, so back to, as you think about what I'm talking about, um, you want to go into an environment where you want, you, remember, you're there for you. You're there to grow. You're there to have a career. But the best way for you to get a career and to advance in your career is to give to others, is to help and support others. Because you help and support those above you. And then you're smart. By the way, I'm just guessing everybody in here is smart. So, well, you have to be. So you have to be smart, and you have to be really smart, and you've got to continue to, to grow and, and, and build your brain. Education doesn't end outside these doors, and, and then you guys, presumably, many of you will go to colleges. Doesn't end there. I, I'm, I, my ripe old age, I'm studying more than ever, because I have to stay ahead. And I also have, a, as a leader, I have a responsibility to share and teach people in my company and in my companies and these are adults with master's degrees so I have to I learn from them and they learn from me okay last thing on this and by the way guys I'm gonna just make one more point and then um, and then I want questions so start thinking um, and not too hard I'm just kidding um, <clears throat> appearance kind of I'm gonna kind of dump everything into um, of the, the, this, these are called soft skills. So I'm going to go into the softest of the soft skills. <clears throat> Things like appearance. Um, and again, I don't care if you have long hair, short hair, you know, three eyes, tattoos, whatever. Whatever your environment is, don't alienate yourself from that environment. So if you want to be an investment banker, I would suggest you don't get facial tattoos. It's just just a Fairly simple uh, uh, um, suggestion. Uh, if you want to work in, you know, in finance, and again, a lot of you, none of you in here probably even care about finance, but you see where I'm going with that. It's don't alienate your audience. Try to like I'm not wearing a suit today, but I've at least you want to show people that you have respect for yourself and you respect the the company. The second thing is within this kind of the soft of the soft, your cell phone. I have enough respect for you guys. I shut my phone off. I put it in my back pocket. In the last year, I have learned one thing. Nothing says I don't care about anything you have to say. I couldn't give a toss about anything any of you have to say more than if I would have looked at my phone at any time. So be present when you're in a conversation. Be try. There's nothing, you'll learn more by listening to people to actually listening to them. And by the way, the minute you're done listening to them, tell them, you know what, thank you, got it, I'm moving on, and then get the phone. Or if you really want to be a jerk, got it, okay, excellent, okay, because you've now broken rapport. So be present in your communication with other people. Um, when you listen, <clears throat> 
when you actually listen to another person and show them that you're listening and not uh -huh, uh -huh, but actually listening they they will actually share more with you they will give more to you, you will learn more and listen for the per and here's another thing this sadly I live in the US I am Canadian I still carry a Canadian passport in the United States we have stopped listening to one another for the purpose of learning we listen as a pause and a time to take breath so we can come right back at them, okay? That's not listening, that's not a communic communication. So uh, again, this is within the context of life and in uh, your work is, uh, there's, a, there's a great, it's listening, but it's listening with intent and, de and deliberate listening. And again, there's nothing wrong with, if I don't wanna listen to you anymore, Thank you, thanks for what you've said. I'm out, okay, back to the phone, right? That's not your problem that you're done with what they've had to say. But you'll never learn, you'll never grow, you'll never have deep, strong and relationships. What I mean by deep and strong, where you really get to know somebody. If you're constantly looking down, and, and again, this isn't some, you know, there's enough videos out there on, you know, look up and see the world. That's all fine and nice. There's, phones are great, text is great, social media, everything has its place until, until it becomes addictive or until it becomes troublesome and problematic. But anyway, so <clears throat> try to be that person within, and so back to the, what I'll call the corporate world or the business world. You can ha be, be, again, try to present yourself and by the way, if you do have a certain look, wear it, wear it hard, wear it proud, but make sure it's the right, again, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's I, I can't think of the example right now, but I think you guys get what I mean. And again, listening, but listening with purpose and with focus. Uh, those are really the, so those are really the main areas of soft skills that I wanted to share with you guys. Are there, Questions while I grab some water. Yes, ma'am. What's the most interesting job you've ever had? <laughs> <clears throat> Inter okay, well, in okay, interesting. My first job, I cleaned fish at the Miracle Food mar Market in Toronto. <laughs> so my family moved to Toronto when I was 15, and I had to make calamari which is squid, and you clean the squid. It's so gross, and if you squeeze the eyes, the ink comes out. And then I'd make calamari, which are essentially rings of squid. Um, I grew up on a farm, so there was a lot of uh, picking eggs, a lot of, lot of egg picking, carrying shop pails out to the cows. And, um, you know, I... I I think other than that, I've had, I've been pretty fortunate with, like I've, I've started at the bottom on a lot of things. Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of weird jobs, that's the Miracle Food Mart uh, fish market server would be probably my, the weirdest. Assuming you took a worker, duplicated him, and then <laughs> took a phone away from one of the, from one of these duplicate workers and gave the other one a phone, who would be the more efficient worker on average in your job experience? Okay, so I'm, okay, so I'm gonna, well, that's a loaded question. It is. It's a very loaded question, because are we in the community, are, are we working at Facebook or in a communications company? Are we working at Talis or Rogers? Then the guy without a phone is, is working, he's a carpenter without a hammer. But if I need somebody to focus on, say, grading papers, you're a, a TA, you're a professor's assistant, I'll, I'll, I'll put my money on the no phone gal or guy. So it's context, it's, 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 it's context. The phone is a great thing, until it's not. So, uh, oh yes, does that sort of, were you trying to get me? Did you almost get me? No, no, I was wondering <laughs> On, on, on balance, I'll tell you this, on balance, 
when you're dealing with human beings in a, in a service environment, holster the phone. Stay focused on people. When you're dealing with human beings and actually trying to have a relationship with a human being, holster. When you're with your buddies and hopefully, you know, and, or, and on a date, holster. And with your parents, holster. <laughs> Until your parents drive you nuts, at which point, unholster. But thank you. Yes? Oh, jeez. Um, I think it's, I, 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 don't know the, I don't know the percentage distribution of nature, nurture. I'm the baby of four boys. Uh, my dad was the oldest of five boys. So I come, I, the, the nature part of it is I come from a very male dominated farm, big athlete, loud, very loud, you know, I'm the youngest, so you got to kind of, like, if you don't speak up, you're going to just, you know, you're going to end up kicked kick to the side. Um, I think, I think experience comes from uh, or knowledge. So I know what I'm talking about. I've been through it. I've seen, I, you know, I've seen, I, and I don't want to say I've seen it all. I still have a ways to go, but with experience. With exp I don't know if it's knowledge enables experience or experience creates knowledge and maybe it's a little like that algebra is a little bit of both. Um, but I like people. It's never, by the way, it's not easy. I was nervous coming up here. But once you get going, it's like, and you guys are a great audience too. You're 99% of you are listening. I've noticed Frank wasn't listening for quite some time. <laughs> but. Are you, so to teach this, I, I think, I, I hate the way I just said that. I think that um, I like people, I like to teach, I like to, I, I, I sincerely like to help people. I've had enough experience where I know that what I have to say has some level of value. Um, I don't like the sound of my own voice. I will not watch this. Um, I've seen other interviews and I just, it's cringeworthy, but I think that I, this is another thing. To stand up in front of a group of people, you will always make more money than everybody else. That's one thing I can tell you. So well, again, whether you want to be in tech, tech, I've cleaned it up, uh, um, automotive, when you get to that point where you can actually speak and teach to others, you'll always make more money because there's something, I don't know what it is, but there's something that people will, they'll listen to you, they'll want to listen to you, they'll want to work with you. It's, a, it's actually a skill that's terrifying. There's a saying, what is it? The two things human beings fear the most in life are death and public speaking. And they don't know which order they actually fear. <laughs> and, and and it is, again, look, I, you guys are, I, I'm not, you guys are high school kids. I've spoken in front of like film professionals where I look in the audience, I'm like, well, I watched your movie three weeks ago and I'm nervous. Or university students. But it's, if you have something to say, a value. But anyway, guys, that's something I would add in your, your arsenal of tricks. I call it arrows in your quiver. Add these arrows in your quiver of skills and talents and, uh, bite the bullet and try to do some public speaking. So anyway, yeah. You spoke about as a leader, you like to maintain the value gap between even the most educated of your employees and people around you. Uh, what do you focus on to keep that value gap, to be able to get back to somebody who's even the most educated? I, I love that question. And, I fr and, and thank you, by the way, the way you frame that. I actually don't want to be the smartest. The minute I'm the smartest, we're doomed. And I'm not being self-deprecating. I'm not because I need everybody to be striving. What I try to do is I try to understand. <clears throat> so 
and by the way, I'll correct Frank. I, I, I'm an executive producer, so I work on the finance side of film and television. I have produced, which means you're literally at the rock face with, your ha with the hammer and chisel. That's the people making it. That's the people with the 6.30 call time for craft services who go home at 10 at night and, they, and repeat 21 days in a row with, or 25 days in a row. Your average Canadian film is uh, 16 to 21 days of filming, maybe with a day off, okay, or one, one day off. Anyway, um, I try to understand where the industry's going. I have to understand where economics are going, where taste is going. Um, but I couldn't tell you one thing about that camera. I couldn't tell you, I know this is a lavalier that I'm using. I know nothing about it. Okay, so within that, right, the people I work with, I need them to be smarter. Um, I try to, I stay in my lane, okay? The minute I start wasting time learning about tripods and cameras, I'm never gonna be able to catch up to a guy who's been a director of cinematography or director of photography or photographer for even two years, right? Because for two years, that's been their whole realm. Um, so it's wait, like it's just, it's, it's not even on my, it's just next, it's not on my radar screen. Um, but I think that whatever it is you do, there's nothing wrong with being a generalist. In other words, having not a lot of knowledge but a lot of different things. Sorry guys, I've completely avoided all of you over here. Um, but <clears throat> have, your, have your focus, have your emphasis, it's almost hierarchies, have your emphasis, the tip of the spear of expertise of what you love to do or what you like to do. But have these other areas of you know, one, two, three things that you're, you're above average thought, intellect, capability. And then down here, have your, I'm aware of, like I have a thing called, I'm aware of it, and it's broad information. But the minute you ask me to, you know, deep dive, I'm like, not me, but let's, you know, find someone. So, anyone? Yes? Uh, with the hashtag uh, MeToo movement, did you see any change in your workplace and uh, your overall uh, respect for others? That's a hard question. Yes, yes, have I? Uh, it absolutely has made a change. I don't want to get to, that's a good question, I appreciate it, and I'm not, I don't want to dodge it. I'm going to dodge it, but not in a disrespectful way. <clears throat> There's a lot of bad people in Hollywood, like bad. I, in fact, I know some of the players, or knew some of the players, I've met them, didn't like them. Um, is there, more than anything, when you, when, you, when you bring, when you identify something and you bring it to the forefront, it's what does, what does the collective do with that? And I believe the collective, they're not perfect, but I believe the collective has said, there's a problem here. There has been a long standing problem. So to answer your question directly, it has made a difference. It has made changes. The issue is, is I don't know the out, like, I don't know where that change is going to land in the end. Um, and it could land badly. I, I don't know. I'm just, anyway, thank, those, those, thank you for that question. Yes? Um, before you talk about, like, holstering your phone, but in your job role, like, you, you need your phone, basically, the whole time, don't you? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I have, oh, go ahead. I just thought, as a producer, people are texting you, camera people, tech people, saying there's a problem with this or that, or we need you here, or there's a finance problem with this. So, as an executive producer, I'm fortunate enough that I have, I'm here, uh, so I have my own challenges, but I hire excellent producers to deal with, again, chisel, hammer, rock face, right, they're the ones, because, Filmmaking, guys, is manufacturing. It is, I'll, I'll see, uh, it's absolute manufacturing. Um, so no, yes, I use my phone a lot. Uh, I, have, um, I have good people, like right now, there's people fielding calls and dealing with things. But I also am so on top of my schedule that already on Thursday or Friday last week, everybody knew 
I'm unavailable, don't call me, don't bother me for two hours. It's not just that, if you do, I have people to, to deal with. What I have started doing is I've started shutting my phone off when I'm at a, a meal. In fact, this whole nonsense of you know, sitting down to eat and I've got my fork and my knife and my phone, I, I actually will say, are you gonna eat your phone? No, get, I don't wanna look at it because my fork will go into it because I want to have a conversation with you as a human being. And if I'm really busy, you only get 15 minutes for lunch, but I give you that 15 minutes. So old days, 45 minutes, feed up. Hey, phone, hang on. But I manage my phone because my interaction with people is too important to let this thing get in the way. Doesn't mean, I'm not, guys, I'm not trying to vilify phones, but I'm saying that there's, a, there's you can actually use, this is a tool. Remember, phone is a tool. This is my, my belt is a tool, keep some pants up. But when I wanna put my pajamas on later, I don't wear a belt. There's a time for using your tool. So, um, but again, it's managing, it's, it's managing time and it's how important human connections are with you. No longer a relevant <laughs> Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I've been really fortunate in my career. I've been, I, so I have to, I gotta go, I'll go quick through this. So I played junior hockey in Ontario and I never finished high school. And then I played junior hockey and then I played professionally in Europe. And then the University of Manitoba and Canadian universities have a program called Mature Students. So when I was 21, I was able to apply to the University of Manitoba and go, hey guys, I never finished high school, why not? I was playing hockey, come on in. And by the way, we have a hockey team here, right? And I'm like, no, I'm done. Like, I'm, if I wanna play hockey, I'll get paid to do it, but I'm here to be a student. Uh, I, I, I went through school, I did my degree, uh, graduated with, on the dean's list. So I'm really proud of that, because I was a dummy, like just a complete dummy in high school. Um, I, actually, I wasn't a dummy, I just didn't go to high school, I didn't apply myself. <clears throat> what I did is I took the first job that came my way and I learned from it. And I learned from the people around me. I took a job in the States. This is a long way of saying what happened for me was uh, I, I always made myself available to new opportunities in new places. I didn't stay here. The min I was literally out of here, what, three weeks? two, three weeks after my final exam, I have never been back other than to visit. Um, so what happened is, is as I, so I worked for big companies, and this isn't in the film industry, okay? I worked for a, a cleaning company in the States, but a Fortune 100 company. And I learned and I got promoted. And I also was investing money, or saving money, investing money, saving money, so I was growing. I didn't know where I was, just kind of adrift. But I, was grow so, but I was growing, putting some money away, okay? I was learning from these other people. I didn't want to work in the cleaning business. I, I just didn't know what I wanted. So eventually what happened is we, I started with a business, with a friend of mine, we started an ad agency in Toronto. And through that ad agency, as we would do commercials, we would get into, um, we, you have to do the post-production and visual effects and animation, you know, and sound on, um, the commercials. And that company that would do our commercial post-production work, at that time I, was, I sold the ad agency. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. No, in fact, I was gonna move to Italy and drink wine and chase Italian girls and who knows what. <clears throat> and that company, that post-production company, purchased, and so the long version, the short version is I got really lucky, but I kept getting lucky by putting myself in opportunities to find luck. And what happened is that post-production company purchased a company in Germany which owned the company in New Zealand that was doing the digital intermediary on Two Towers and Return of the King. They hired me as their CFO. Friday night we were out for drinks in downtown Toronto and on Tuesday I'm on an airplane to Wellington, New Zealand and sitting with Peter Jackson who I didn't know who he was. He was this 
heavy set guy with a big beard who never wears any socks and shoes. Which, by the way, is about to go tell him, uh, put some socks and shoes on, not knowing that he's Peter Jackson. But my point is, is I, I didn't, I don't have. I wish I had a. I went to film school. I did my, you know, my short films. I met the right, you know, I submitted them to the, to the right film festivals, won an award, right? That's what we want. That rarely happens. Some of my favorite producers in Hollywood are guys that worked in business and finance and somehow uh, uh, lent the money to a producer against his tax credits right here in Manitoba. And five movies later, you know, he's a big time producer. So there's, 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 I'm, 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 I'm in the film world right now, but I think that the, the question you asked me is a really great question. You either know what you're going to do and you kind of follow this path and you follow that path, or if you don't, because honestly, I was mid thirties at this point or early 30, early thirties at this point. And uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do. But when I found it, I found it. And I loved it. And it was, you know, and then I, you know, I grew from there. But I had all of this intellect, this, this business knowledge from the carpet cleaning business and the lawn care business and the miracle food market making calamari, right, business. Because I accumulated it. And I, learned, and I, I think where I was very fortunate and maybe because I was the youngest of many brothers, is I used to watch for, ah, oh, okay, that was stupid. Why was that stupid? Okay, I'm not going to do that. I, I tried to kind of always observe what's going on and learn and kind of pack my, you know, my saddlebags full of knowledge and ideas and concepts of, because one thing I always thought of is, what would I do if I was the boss? So, good question, man. Thank you. Yes. What's the funniest job application that you've seen? I have no idea. I, I, you know what? You guys are lucky. You guys are so lucky. You're like, we're oldish. We're in the old neighborhood. There was nothing funny back then. Like it was all like, you fill it out, and if, you're, if the check marks out of the box, there was no. I don't know. Am I wrong? I, like I don't remember. I think these guys have like every, the. Guys have like funny applications now, but I, I, I can't off the top of my head. The truth is, by the time somebody gets to me, because I don't hire like <clears throat> production staff, like I'll hire a producer, and at that point I'm like LinkedIn, IMDB, or it's a reference. About uh, most of my hiring is reference. It's another thing. Now, I, I, geez, I almost got out of here without giving you great advice. Who you know is so vital. Is my most important, my most valuable asset in my life. It's not this, it's the people I know. And, the, and not only the people I know, but the people I know, it sounds bad, but there are people that I know that I love and my friends, and they're valuable to my career as I am to theirs. But there are people that I know that I don't, you know, not so much like, but I'm, you know, I put in, the, it's, like a, it's like your grandmother. You know, I put in the three or four calls a year, check in on them, and uh, make sure I stay in front of them. Your network, the people you know, and by the way, the people who drag you down, get rid of them. Um, but, but, but people you know is, um, your network is very valuable. Oh. What is a CFO? Chief Financial Officer. Thank you. And in Europe or the rest of the world, it's Managing Director of Finance. Same position. Yep. So this may not be of interest to a lot of people, but I'm a miniature painter. I like to paint miniatures. So did you get a chance to tour with a workshop? Did I tour Weta? <laughs> this is terrible. Yes, for those of you who don't know, Weta Workshop is the... In Wellington, New Zealand, there's a little peninsula called Miramar, and it's now called Jacksonville's. Um, <laughs> it's... Uh, you could make a $500 million film right here in Miramar. And it's cornerstone at the end of the street, you'll drive right into Weta Workshop. Um, 
When I left New Zealand, we had just finished the extended cut DVD of Two Towers, or of Return of the King, four hours and one minute. Um, I get a phone call from a lady named Josie, which is Pete Jackson's assistant, personal assistant. And she goes, you've yet to come tour the workshop. And I said, you know what? Uh, I, I can come, like I'm literally flying out in two days. I had a sword fight with Aragorn's actual sword in the movie, and she had Gimli's axe, and I was like, Shh. and she's a lady of a certain vintage, older vintage, I might say delicately, and she, bless her heart, and she's like, Shh. And the actor Sam Neill, I don't know if you guys know the actor Sam Neill. Dra anyway, they had literally, there was, a, there was a Sam's in the corner, but not Sam the actor, Sam's rubber. And I'm like spearing him, and I'm like, take that, Sam, because he didn't accept an offer I made one time. For <laughs> I lowballed him, I'm like, take that, Sam. Um, and the, you know, the black, the, the thing that the, the lady, See, that's how little I know of the movie. Like the big Morningstar thing? Yeah. Then, yeah. Yeah, that thing's like, like it weighs, yeah, that weighs more. <laughs> so I swung that around. But yes, yeah, so to answer that, yes, I've, I've, it's, one of, it's one of the great joys in my life. And actually, so my last name is Schmeichel. And as the, in, in the lobby at Weta, there's one of the, the orc general who it looks so lifelike that when I was asked to take a picture, I'm like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm like, I'm in the claws, right? I'm like, oh, like this could be the end, because I don't know, and I'm just, I, anyway. But there was Schmeagel, so I, there's, I think it's on my Facebook there. I don't know where it's public. Anyway, so I'm like this around this rubber of st statue of of Schmeagel and Pete, well, Pete Jackson walks out and he goes, oh, lovely, Schmeichel and Schmeagel. <laughs> and I just went, really? And he goes, I, I had to. He's like, I had to. He's like, carry on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that was, uh, and they were just gearing up for King Kong oh, yeah. at the time. Yeah. So Pete had just bought the green boat. Oh, yeah. So at the, have you been to Miramar? No. Oh, okay. So at the uh, end of Miramar. So at the end of Miramar, at the bay, the, the new green boat was there. So yeah, I actually, I actually spent some time just on that, on that boat. But yeah, that was neat. That, you just brought me back to a fun yeah. time. <laughs> Haven't thought about that in a while. Oh. How many big time producers or actors have you met? Not a lot. Not a lot. I mean, I've met. I, I enjoy. I respect actors very much. Like they're, when they're good, they're worth every penny. People think they can act. It's hard. It's. I, I know it sounds weird because I'm the same. I was the guy. Like yeah, whatever. Like anybody can. No, it's hard. Um, I put offers out. I put offers out to agents. I hire directors. Work with directors. There's nothing worse than a producer who gets too involved in, in production and steals. So just in the hierarchy of executive producers, they deal with finance. The producer really is the, the manufacturer. He's the general manager. And then you hire this thing called a director. And you essentially take that money and the ideas, and you go, here, Mr. or Mrs. Director, make it. Take, this, take these architectural designs called a script and production plan and give me a negative and give me a give me 90 minutes of beauty in 9 months or, or 12 months or 14 months but in terms of actors yeah i have you know i have some actor friends they're good people but and i'm in awe, you know there's the the people who i'm in awe of are um, Brian, Brian Grazer, he's, uh, he's a producer. So look him up, he's, he's Ron Howard's, he and Ron Howard make some of the greatest movies of all time. Those are the guys that, that I admire. Um, a friend of mine, Jim Young, is a producer. 
nothing huge, but I admire the I admire producers and executive producers because it's really hard to raise money for movies and TV, especially now with people on their phones stealing them. <laughs> Just kidding. I thought I'd bring it back to the phones, but no, it's uh, anyway. But I do. Actors are incredible, absolutely incredible. So I'm I'm not gonna name drop. Yes. Favorite martial arts you've ever done when you were working for the ad agency? <clears throat> uh, we did a thing for it's called the Royal Winter Fair in Toronto, and it's the tagline that our agency came up with was uh, "When Country Comes to the City," and so we had like goats in the back of taxis. We had like two ducks at a Jays game, and uh, one of them, my favorite. Did you meet? No, you meet, met. We have one of them with a guy in a suitcase, or a, like a businessman wrote his tie, and he's got, and he's like this. He's like, and you see two cows kind of like sneaking away, like obviously cow dung. He stepped in it. Um, that that was a fun. That was a fun commercial. That's that's probably the only one I I really remember. And again, I see, it was a creative environment, and I sat in on. I had input on creative as the managing director but I ran the business right I I made sure that you know that because a business needs like analytics and you need your finance right and you got to know what you're doing so I always have run the business of the business yes You, just activity. It's, you know what, activity breeds activity. I hate using cliches, but you do, first of all, uh, what was that movie? Uh, um, Margin Call. And there's a great scene with Jeremy Irons, who, by the way, is a great actor um, and a good guy. Um, when you want to be de dealing with something, you're either first you're better or best, smarter, or you cheat. The reason I bring that up is the first thing you can do is be, be a top graduate in school because your teachers talk and be a top or be, ex excel at something. First way to get anybody to talk about, to know you is to excel at something. Okay. You don't have to excel at anything to, <laughs> to get people, but honestly, there's, I hated it when I was in the ad world, and I didn't do it enough. In fact, I think our agency would have done better had I. But there's, there's eight, pretty much, if you want to be in the goldfish, like selling business, I bet there's an association of goldfish sellers. There's associations for everything, right? Everything. Find them. Find where they meet. Find where they're, con everybody has an annual convention. It's just when you get old, you just want to get away from your family, get away from your city, and have a reason to get together. But um, whatever it is you want to do. And by the way, even if you think you want to do something right now at your, I don't want to be old guy to young people, but explore things. Like, I absolutely know I want to be a auto mechanic at 18, 19, 20. I got news for you. At 30, you may be like, what am I doing as an auto mechanic? Be open to things. Like be, be, uh, like, be open to ideas. But if you absolutely know, also attack it, right? Attack things. Don't do things, can I say ass? Half-assed, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but back to this, honestly, networking is, is in and you're at a family wedding, or one year, you know, you're getting to an age here, five, four or five years from now. Wet, you know, you're going to be going to weddings all the time, which is terrible. I hate weddings, but you meet people and you get to know them and you listen to them, and um, but more than anything, it's it's activity breeds activity. It's it's really if you sit at home, you ain't going to meet anybody, right? And when you're out. As funny as this may sound to you, I'm actually shy when I'm out. Like, to, 
I'm not a guy that walks up to girls and goes, hey, how are you? I'm like, oh, hi. So, but, but, but just mix it up. Get out there and mix it up. Yeah? Why'd you quit playing hockey in Europe? Oh, I, I got hurt all the time. I, from 14 years old on, I got hurt all the time. And um, I, I just, I, I don't know, I just, I'd, I'd had enough. I didn't love, I was good, I just, I didn't love hockey. I was just good enough to play. But, and I, had, I, I got sick of being injured all the time. Um, so as students, when um, we, we fail at something, um, it's not too big of a deal because we're here for a learning experience. Yep. But as a big producer, when, <laughs> for example, a movie flops or um, your project gets canceled, how do you deal with picking yourself back up and protecting your image that you still, <coughs> people still uh, respect you the same as before the flop? Yeah, that's, um, <laughs> that's a getting water, pause, think moment. There are, there are certain things where, I don't want to say the stakes are higher, because that's, when you have a flop in the film or television industry, if you're new, you're done. It's just, it's, it's just the way it is. It's tough business, okay? Um, you know, just like hockey, if the Leafs lose tonight, right, we're done. Now we got next year, but it's, it's so much different, like the film industry is kind of, I don't actually want to spend a lot of time on the film industry failure side because it's so nuanced. Like it's, it's like you've got NASA, you've got rock, like that's death involved, right? When they fail, you're dead, right? And I don't know how to work my way down, but film industry is weird. It's not real life, it's nuanced, okay? But failure there, if you're not experienced, is you're done in the industry. And if you're really good and you do three in a row, you're done. And it's just because so many, it's, well, it's like sports. When you're, like, look at how many kids in Canada would want to play for the Jets or want to play in the National Hockey League. And, you, you know, if you don't have a good year, eventually, they're going to buy out your contract and that kid's going to come up from the American League, right? And they're going to draft another kid. Like, this constant turnover. Okay. In, in regular business that isn't nuts, oh, are we done? Or? Okay, so real quick, guys, in real business, in life, I was asked this question last year, what's the best virtue anyone can have, or what's the best advice, and I'd say persistence. Guys, persistence, 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 I know that never give up, honestly, never give up. Uh, it, there's a reason you hear it, but I would say that when you get knock down when you fail at something, dust yourself off, back up, keep going, or keep trying. And sometimes it's not wrong to get knocked down. Get up from the canvas, take a moment, okay, and then keep going. The key is to get up and, and dust yourself off. Some guys, some people can take, immediately get right back in the fray, and others, they need a little one of these, right? But anyway, I persistence, guys, and uh, just push for press forward. We want to thank you, uh, Mr. Schmeichel, for coming down on your busy schedule. Thank you. A small token of our appreciation. I know that you're really, really busy, and we really, really appreciate Is it. A mug. And th <laughs> thank you again. Thank you.